You wear the same fur coat every day. Yes, you do. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Heather, I'm also known as Rye Crafty. Uh, that's my Instagram handle and the name of this channel. And welcome to the week two Me Made May 2023 update. Oh hi, is it pop date? Conan here has just had dinner, so I think he's gonna have a little nap soon. But yeah, here we are, we're halfway through May. Week two of Me Made May is over. I did the same thing. I took a photograph of my outfit each day when I could. And now I want to talk about what I wore uh, that I made in the past week. So Monday, I wore this really cute jersey dress that is store-bought. <laughs> uh, but I took a photo of it anyway because it really inspired me to make some more jersey dresses because when I got up that Monday morning I knew I wanted to wear that dress even though it was me made May and I know I didn't make it I just wanted to wear that dress because it is so comfy and it had sleeves the right length that I wanted and it was it was just what I wanted to wear that day but it also reminded me that a jersey dress is just such great secret pajamas to wear to work and I should make more of them. I have a couple, I've got a couple ebony dresses, um, but I just wasn't really feeling like that tent silhouette that day. So I wore this slightly more fitted jersey dress that I bought at uh, White Stuff one of the last time I was in England. And so yeah, this is not a me made, but it has gotten me thinking about buying some jersey and finding some good uh, jersey sewing patterns. Although when I got home on Monday, I did change into comfy clothes that were me maids. I wore the Greco Tee by Ensemble Patterns. That's a free pattern. It's actually, this is a different version, but I'm wearing one today as well. Uh, just sort of a grown on sleeve with this little cuff option. Boxy t-shirt. So comfy. So great for just hanging around the house after work, walking the dog. And my Plateau Joggers by Closet Gore Patterns, made out of, jer uh, not jersey, uh, sweatshirting from Blackbird Fabrics. Again, super comfy, perfect outfit for after work on a Monday. Tuesday, I wore another jersey dress to work. This one I made. This is the Orage dress by Deer and Doe, uh, which I talked about in a previous video after I'd finished it. And I made this out of Merino jersey from Blackbird Fabrics. Our weather has been really up and down, hot and cold in the past week because it's finally spring in Toronto and there you go. And the weather is just settling down, trying to figure out if it's hot or cold. Tuesday was a slightly cooler day, so I thought the wool jersey would be okay. I wouldn't overheat. Again, I wore it to work. I was also going out with some friends after work that day. I wasn't certain if the, uh, the window, the boob window, <laughs> on that dress was going to be a little too much for work. Um, but I put it on that morning to look at myself in the mirror and see, and it really doesn't it doesn't show that much and especially when you look at the neckline on the jersey dress I wore the day before which I've worn so many times to work probably once a week in the winter <laughs> with tights honestly shows off a lot more chest because it's sort of it's not I wouldn't say it's super low but it's like a u-neck and there's no turtleneck there's no other covering here so I wore that to work really enjoyed it it was nice and warm but I have a feeling it's probably the last time I'll be able to wear it this year because it's getting hot and it's just going to be too hot for wool. Wednesday, no. No me made on Wednesday. Just didn't feel like it. Couldn't decide what I wanted. Needed to do laundry <laughs> is also a factor. Uh, so no photo for Wednesday. That's my, I think that's the first complete zero day. Which is fine. And honestly, I thought about oh, I should put something on, I should take a picture, I should really wear something I made. It's me made May, you're doing these videos, etc, etc. But that's just not real life. Sometimes I don't want to wear those clothes. I don't know what percentage of my wardrobe is me made, but I have a lot more store-bought clothes than I have me made. Thursday, did wear a me made. I was working from home that day, so I wore uh, another Renfrew t-shirt. This one, I think last week I wore a cowl neck one. This week I wore just a round neck one out of this nice black and white stripe fabric. I really like that fabric. I think it's fine for working from home. Um, 
I think I've even worn that t-shirt to work with a nice cardigan over. During the day I was wearing store-bought leggings with that, but then again after work uh, to take the dog out for a walk and gotten warmer, and I wore my uh, two-color uh, plateau joggers that I made last summer out of some remnants from other sweatshirting fabrics. Uh, so they've got the one pink leg, one yellow, and I think I think they're fun. They're silly and fun and super comfy. Great for hanging around the house, walking the dog. I didn't hem those, and so I'm just letting the letting the fabric roll up a little like mitts do, and they're just super casual, really cozy. Friday was the first wearing of my Alba skirt by Sew Over It. I think I talked about this in a previous video, maybe my maybe recapping what I made in March, or recapping what I've made so far in 2022, I think. But that's a pattern from Sew Over It that's in a bundle called the uh, Summer Dreaming Bundle. Cute little wrap skirt. I made it out of dead stock, like red bandana-y, bandana-ish print fabric that I bought from Blackbird last summer. And it was really fun to wear it. I, uh, the top I wore it with is store-bought, but I do have a very similar pattern for that sort of sleeveless turtleneck uh, top that I do want to make. I have fabric for it. I just need to get there. But for now, I wore it with a store-bought one. And that skirt's fun because it's sort of got it's got a high-low hem and it's a wrap. At the back, it's almost ankle length, which felt a little formal for work, but I wouldn't want to make it any shorter. I mean, without changing that sort of scoop, because in the front, the two, the wrap part, the way it sort of layers over itself, like it's a good length in the front, but then it's sort of fun and long in the back. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed getting to wear that one. I think it'll get a lot of wear this summer. Saturday was the first wearing so far this season, this year, of my Closet Core Sally jumpsuit that I made out of black and white stripe. That's in a video from, was that last year or two years ago? I do have a video to link where I talked about making that one, where I had, I thought I had enough fabric because I didn't read the instructions and see which pieces, but there was lining and fronts and backs and I just, I didn't have quite enough fabric, but I only found that out after cutting out most of the pieces, I think. So there's one of the lining pieces is actually, <laughs> it's actually made out of this fabric, a uh, very fine gray and white stripe, but most of that jumpsuit is black and white stripe. At the end of last summer, this is something I'm going to admit to you, the end of last summer, I had worn that thing a lot. And at one point I discovered that there was a hole in the crotch. And it's sat in the mending pile since then. It got one or two last wears after discovering the hole in the crotch. It was at least once. Actually, it was probably only the once. It was probably the day I discovered the hole and then thought, oh no, I have to repair these. I kept wearing them. I kept wearing it because I was inside. And then time came, like 11 o'clock at night, time to take him for his pre-bed bathroom break. And I thought, the clothes I'm wearing have a hole in the crotch. And then I didn't do anything about it <laughs> because it was nighttime, it was dark. I probably wasn't going to run into anyone I know, even though I know a lot of the neighbors. I don't usually run into them at nighttime. So I wore it out anyway. And then I put it in the mending pile where it sat until last week. <laughs> and I just, I got it out, zip zip with the sewing machine, no more hole, it's ready to wear to pieces again this summer. When I was making it, I thought a black and white stripe jumpsuit might be a lot, but then I decided, I think I like clothes that are a lot. <laughs> and then today is Sunday, and I'm wearing another one of my Greco tees. This is the first one I made. It's in a, um, as I said, a little very fine gray and white stripe from Blackbird Fabrics that usually does weird things to cameras but I'm hoping because of the bib of the overalls, it's hiding enough of the stripe that it's not going to do that weird sort of moray thing. And these are my Burnside Bibs overalls that I made a couple years ago. Love them for the summer. Uh, these are full length, uh, down to my feet, but my next sewing project is going to be a shorts version. I've already got it cut out, ready to go. I just need to sew it. But yeah, so this is my fir first wearing of these this year. It's always nice when the seasons change to get all that stuff out of your closet that you haven't worn for months and months. At least he, the way we are here with the weather, I can't 
wear summery stuff like this in the winter at all. So yeah, it's been a good, good Me Made May week. Just the one day without Me Maids, but it's been good. I've been happy with what I've been wearing. And I feel like the challenge of Me Made May has been pushing me a little, but not... Like, I don't feel like I'm faking it. Like, these are all clothes I would wear, I would wear to work, I would wear them in the various situations that I've been in this week. So it's sort of pushing myself to remember that I have these things. And I think that's the fun of Me Made May, is finding these things, wearing them, and thinking, oh yeah, I can wear this to work. Or, why don't I wear these sweatpants instead of the store-bought ones when I get home from work? So that's been fun. Okay, so at the end of last week's video, I showed you... Oh, I have other stuff to show you, too. We'll start with this. At the end of last week's video, I showed you uh, my next couple projects cut out on my sewing table. One is the black shorts version of this, these overalls. The other was the patina blouse. Look at this! So, it's hard to show you at the moment, because it keeps gaping open, because I've not yet, oops, because I've not yet done the buttons. I ran out of black thread, finally I had this huge spool that I've had forever, and I thought I had more, but it turns out that that stuff was navy. So today, I went out to Fabricland, got some black thread, and then I'm hoping tonight um, while this video is rendering and uploading, etc, etc, that I can do the buttonholes and maybe even wear this to work tomorrow. So this fabric I bought a long, long time ago. It's uh, Rifle Paper Co. I think the, uh, the Selvage said it was from their Cat Lady collection. There's no cats on it. It's all sort of flowers and mushrooms, which is why I loved it. I bought it a long time ago. Because I remember I bought it in a quilt shop when I lived in Calgary. I haven't lived in Calgary in six and a half years. It was the little sort of quilt shop, quilt and sewing machines shop that was across the street from the fabric land, which always struck me as a weird place to set up your own sewing store across from the big box sewing store, but they were doing fine. And yeah, so I have no idea how much this cost. I remember it felt like a lot at the time, and I only bought one and a half meters of it, this fabric, so I think it must have felt like a lot at the time if I only bought one and a half instead of two meters. Um, but I love it. I love the colors. I love the, all the sort of mushrooms and funky flowers in the print. And then the collar is another sort of just mystery rayon twill or some sort of floaty, fabricy viscosy maybe twill that I just had in the stash and then that's what I cut uh, the black pair of overalls out of that I will hopefully make this week. But yeah, excited to do the buttons. Like everything, literally everything is done. I've hemmed everything. I just need to do the buttonholes. Sew on the buttons. And I have really cute really nice uh, gla black glass buttons to go on it. They are shank buttons, so I'm not going to be able to get to the machine to sew them on. I'm going to have to do it myself. <laughs> but it'll be worth it. The other thing I have to show you, let me just go grab. So, the last time I bought fabric was in February of this year. And I thought, you are doing so well. This is so great. You haven't bought fabric since then. You're slowly working through what you have in all the piles around the house. And then somehow I realized I've never bought fabrics from Core Fabrics, which is the Closet Core, um, Closet Core Patterns, if that's their fabric store. And so I thought, let's just go browse and see what their store's like, because I haven't even looked at the webpage. And before I knew it, I had $400 worth of fabric in the cart, because I just, I just thought, oh, Let's just see what I like. Let's just add it to the cart and see what it is. That was too much fabric. That was way too much fabric. So I cut it down, I cut it down, but there were a few things I ended up ordering. One of the things, and I ordered a couple non-fabric things, and this is what reminded me when I was talking about the patina blouse. I have wanted one of these for a long time. It's a button gauge. You expand it, 
and all these things stay the same width apart so you can space your buttons nicely there's little measurements on there I've wanted these one of these for a long time and they had them in the notions part of the store so I bought that I also bought a little buttonhole cutter set because I just cut my buttonholes open with either my seam ripper very carefully or scissors also very carefully but it can be a little nerve-wracking so this has a little sort of chisel thing and a little awl and just sort of good general sewing tools to add to the shoe box where I store all my <laughs> random sewing tools. So that will hopefully make the buttons on this super easy. But those things didn't cost too much. They certainly didn't get me to free shipping. Or scratch that itch for more fabric, even though I have too much fabric. <laughs> so because it was my first order, and I signed up for their mailing list, I got a coupon. Which didn't work on sale things, and I think a couple of these fabrics were in their sale section, but the ones that weren't, I got... It was 10 or 15% off for my first order or something. So I bought this, which is a wonderful tropical print. It's all like palm trees and sailboats and surfboards. This is viscose? Yeah, viscose. Eco Vero. I bought three and a half yards of this. I think it can make a fun dress. Maybe like a fun wrap dress. I mean, I'm not planning on going anywhere beachy this summer, but it gets so hot here, it feels like the beach. So there's this. I bought, you're gonna be very proud of me, I bought a solid color. Yes, it's pink, but at least it's a solid, because <laughs> everything I have is patterned. This is cotton, a uh, silky poplin. I have two yards of this. Um, I think I just want to make like a fairly simple, uh, fairly simple shirt out of a solid color so I can wear it with some of my other patterned, crazy patterned things that I have. Of course, I didn't buy white or black or anything practical. I went with pink. And yes, when I'm saying yards, these are in yards. Despite the fact that Closet Core is in Montreal, Everything comes in yards instead of meters. And like, I understand that the American market is probably a huge section of their um, sales, but I'm sure it is Blackbird too, and they sell in meters. So I had to remind my brain when I was ordering and when I was looking at um, fabric allowances for patterns that I was thinking about, I just had to remember to think in yards because I usually think about that stuff in meters and I always find the meters section of the pattern envelope. I find my measurements in the imperial inches and feet section, <laughs> but when I'm thinking about fabric yardage, which I still call yardage, I'm thinking in meters. The third piece of fabric I got, and I think this was sale section as well, I made up for the fact that I bought a solid color by buying this madness, and I love it. This is also cotton Scandi Folk Print Cotton Poplin. It's 100% cotton. Four yards. I could do something fabulous. I think some sort of fabulous long shirt dress. Um, I love it. It's crazy. I mean, I'd only gone three months without buying fabric, but it felt like longer. <laughs> but now I really do have to stop buying fabric and sew a lot more and a lot faster to get some of this moving and get rid of some of the piles of fabric around the house. I mean, it's very pretty. It's very nice. And it is kind of inspiring to be looking at the fabric all the time. But then sometimes it feels like it's looking back and saying, well, why did you just buy those things? We're still here. The stuff you bought in February. And the stuff you bought in November is still over there. And the stuff... It's too much. It's too much. But I love it. And I love the colors and the patterns, and that's why I buy things. And I guess, let's just show you my knitting. It's cute. It's tiny. It won't take too long. I have another co-worker, third, in the past eight months or so, that's going on parental leave. And so I'm making another little baby sweater. I'm using the same pattern as I did for the crazy scrappy striped uh, baby sweater I did back in March. But I'm just using two colors, so I'm using a variegated and then this dark steel blue 
which has a little bit of sparkle in it. And I'm making a little sweater for a little baby. I'm making a, the 6 to 12 month size because the baby's going to be born in June and won't need a sweater then, uh, but we'll need a sweater for next winter. So I'm hoping that that is this size. More details about this um, when it's done. Thanks so much for watching. We've had a bunch of new su subscribers in the past week, which is so exciting. Please say hi in the comments. Let me know how your second week of Me Made May went. Have you had an, a day like mine where you just couldn't figure out what you wanted to wear that was Me Made? It happens to all of us. It happens regularly. It's fine. So please uh, give a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you next week for Me Made May week three.